here, believe me. <laughs> so, hello everybody, I'm Islam. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about this year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine that was co-jointly awarded to two great scientists, James Allison from the United States and Tosoko Honyu from Japan. Actually, this year's prize was awarded for their discovery of an innovative cancer therapy that acts on reactivating the immune system to fight against cancer. But first, before we deep dive into our technology and our, uh, our great discovery, let's first talk about cancer. But first I would like to ask you, so does any of you have any relationship or experience with any cancer patient? Just family? Just raise your hand. Thank you. Yeah. Have you, have you, any, have you ever experienced cancer patients? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> So, probably you appreciate so much uh, how awful cancer is and how undoubtedly these, these people really suffer well from the disease. Unfortunately, cancer is still the second cause of death globally, leaving behind more than 18 million cases worldwide. And, uh, and unlikely 50% of these cancers, like over 9 million, die due to the lack of an effective, targeted, potent cancer therapy. So this means that there is still a great need and highly need for better optimizing the cancer therapy to meet the demands of these patients. So first, let's have a look on what happens when your cells go older. So because all of you for sure know that our, our human body is made of different cells, like trillions of cells. And these cells go older over time and they develop kind of disrupted DNA and damage and in order to make up uh, these damaged or old cells, we have, the, we have to go through a procedure, a procedure called cell division to produce normal healthy cells. In such case, this cell division occurs between 50 to 70 billions at times a day. So can you imagine how many mistakes could just occur due to this massive number of cell divisions? And thirdly, there's a great number of errors. But luckily, because we have an active functioning immune system, so luckily we detect these, the immune system can nicely detect the damaged cells and wipe it out, wipe it, it out of the human body. But unfortunately, in the other case scenario, where the immune system fails to detect the first mutation or the first mistake, then another or further mistakes or mutations accumulate over and this leads to the formation of a tumor mass in such case that leads to cancer which can metastasize and spread over distant organs of the human body and unfortunately the immune system in such case it failed but so how the doctors over the last years did manage to treat cancer and what were the cancer option therapy that they did have and what about our current standing right now so surgery being the first pair of cancer therapy until a surgery ago this was the only and final hope for the patients just to be treated luckily this option worked well with some cancers but unfortunately there were plenty of cancers such as blood cancers or other cancers that can spread to more than one site inside the human body. So surgery was not a good and valid option. In the middle of the 20th century, radi the radiotherapy and chemotherapy came to play an important role in treating so many different cancers. But unfortunately, because in radiotherapy, for example, you explore the whole human body, including the tumor part and the non-tumor part, to a certain type of radiations, and this lead also to, the, to harming the healthy cells. And it's, it works the same with chemotherapy that can result in very life-threatening infections due to the weakened immune system of these patients. <coughs> this came to think, this made scientists think about a new and innovative way of treating cancer by looking at this weakened immune system. And if there is a way to reactivate it so it can work perfectly against cancer, and the answer is yes. So this means that immunotherapy provide a more safe approach to treat cancer because it doesn't work on the normal healthy cell, but rather work on only the cancer cells. So right now you should ask me like, so the immune system, can the immune system by itself act against cancer? And the answer is yes. 
Our immune system is the first line of defense that our body uses to fight against different invaders, including bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms. And this amazing system is composed of multiple populations of different cell types that play all together to fight against any invaders. And tonight, for interest of time and for their crucial role in fighting against cancer, I pick these two nice cell populations. To the left, you see here this dendritic cells. These are called dendritic cells because they have this nice branched arm that are called dendrites. And I like to call it the guide because it kind of screens the whole immune body, uh, the whole immune, the whole uh, human body, looking for what is strange inside, and they report it directly to the officer or the T killer cells. And these T killer cells, they are responsible for directly killing and wiping off all these foreign invaders, and like cancer cells, viruses, or whatever. So let's have a closer look on how these two nice cell populations work together in the context of cancer. So imagine that this cancer cell is a spy that tries to sneak into your territory and luckily it shows and releases some specific features of the cancer cell that are called here antigens. And because our guide system is really active and well functioning, so it kind of detects these different molecules here, takes several of them, and report it directly to the station where the officers are. These are the T cells that you have seen in the last slide. <laughs> so what will the T cells do? Then the T cells will ask other T cells to form a patrol and activate all of them just to start, we have a mission. And we have to do it in the perfect way. So once they activate it, they go to the dark side of the tumor that was kind of recognized by the dendritic cells. They break the tumor wall and they infiltrate into the different sides of the tumor to make sure that every single spot of the tumor is kind of covered. And they have to make sure, in order not to harm the healthy cells that might present among this tumor mass, they have to make sure that this is the same thing that they got from the dendritic cells. And once they make sure now we have a cancerous cell, then let's release our toxins and finally destroy it and release a victory flag. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So the question that might come to your mind right now, so why do people still get cancer if we have an amazing, and it's really amazing immune system? So the fact, oh sorry, I forgot to mention something important. So here is a real scene of how the immune system works. So in this, yeah. So this is a green, this green cell is a T cell, and this blue cell is a cancer cell. And these two red dots are just a signal that the T cells could finally detect the cancer cell. And what it is doing right now, it's just crawling over the cancer cell, releasing its toxins to completely destroy it. And it really succeeds in this mission. So coming back to the question I asked, so why do people still get cancer? Cancer is a very tricky disease that, ad that adapts so many different mechanisms to fight against the normal or the healthy immune system. And one of these amazing mechanisms that was discovered by the great scientist of our, of our Nobel Prize this year, that the cancer cell can overexpress or produce a signaling molecule on its surface that tell the T cells, no, come on, go away, I'm a normal cell like your normal body. And normally, the normal cells do express this disturbing signal, so our immune system does, does not attack our own immune cells, our own normal <coughs> healthy cells. So our scientists managed to first detect that these two different stopping signals occur by a high abundance by cancer, and they thought, what about designing a drug molecule that can specifically target these molecules on the cancer cells, and in such case, if you release this stopping signal so that T cells can easily detect the cancer cells and start releasing these toxic molecules that are specifically toxic for the cancer in this context. And this, actually this great discovery was 
coming, like it succeeded to come into real life finally in 2011, 2011 after they got approval from the Food and Drug Administration to be used for treating a severe, to, a severe type of skin cancer. So what are the applicability of these cancer surveys? Like what about the cancer types that can be treated by these different drugs? So starting from head and neck cancers, they can work effectively against the subsets of stomach cancers and colorectal cancers, some blood cancers, liver cancer, and kidney. So this means that they are successful at treating these different cancers, but unfortunately, there are still sometimes even of these cancers that can form a kind of a cover or a shield around them, preventing the immune cells from infiltrating so these cancers are not so these surveys are not valid in this context. But what like the promising results right now that scientists manage it to turn these tumors to be more exposed to, tu to the T cells or to this immune cell through destroying this shield around them so the immune cells can just deep dive into the tumor environment and call the, di and call the disease killing. Now what I've mentioned all my talk is kind of abstract, so now you wonder whether, like, what about the numbers from the real life? In this nice graph, this was a study that, done, that was done across Europe on 5,000 patients with a severe kind of melanoma, which is an aggressive cancer of the skin, and they compared the conventional therapy, the chemotherapy and other normal therapy, other targeted therapy, and they compared the immune survey drug one and drug two that were discovered by our scientists. And as you can see here, there is a little increase in the survival of the patients. But when they combined the drug one and drug two, they could massively see a great difference in the survival of these patients. And this even this effect was potentiated or even increased upon the addition of a novel drug. So what? are the core messages that we can get from this graph here. So first of all, this means that these drugs are approved for more different cancer types. So the FDA every year, upon the clinical trials and upon clinical testing, they found that these drugs can be used for treating not only the, the cancers I mentioned, but they can be to used for treating more cancers. And this is to, uh, here translated in terms of money because this market grows from 10,000 millions to 50,000 millions expected to be in 2025. Also, what is an important message that should be got from this graph that when you combine these two medications, you got potentiated and better results, which means that, yeah, it's great when you work alone, but it's always better to team up and this teaming up results in better results that can lead one day maybe to curing cancer or at least extending the lives of these cancer patients. Besides that, these two drug discoveries opened a new horizons for more drugs to come and work on the immune system by reactivating it. And I, in my opinion, these drugs might get a second Nobel Prize sooner in the coming years. <laughs> At the end, I would like to end my talk by a quote that was stated by Jens Allison, one of the guys who got the Nobel Prize this year for this discovery. He said, cancer immunotherapy is still in its early stages. But as science progresses and clinical research grows, maybe we will be able to talk about curing cancer or greatly extending the life of more cancer patients. Thank you. So, uh, you mentioned that uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy has severe uh, side effects. Yes. Uh, what are the side effects uh, up to date of the immunotherapy? I mean, the side effects are kind of manageable so far, but you cannot say or clearly conclude that these are the current side effects because it has been tested for like a certain time, uh, like just over three or four years so far. So in order to say that there's a valid side effect that coming out of the drug, you need some time. But all, I, what I can tell that most of the side effects of these immunotherapies are right now are so magical by different uh, protocols. Yeah.
some of the yes, please. So uh, you mentioned about this um, some types of cancer they have this shield. Yes. And actually, this T cells like it is T cells cannot really enter this yeah. tumors, right? But then you can use some treatments and you can actually put them inside. But during this time, if they leave the primary tumor, if they leave metastasis, yeah. So is it is it really a good choice to treat? And the of cancers like solid cancer with the shield. Solid cancer. So I think there was a a very close clinical trial that was done on stomach <laughs> cancer. And they showed like great, I mean, in terms of increasing the patient's survival, they, I think they increased it over like, with two years, two more years. than, yeah, more than the conventional therapy. But I think the, the most important cancer with the shield is pancreatic cancer. And I mean, pancreatic the, the cancer, the unfortunately, like the results is not one, that one good. One percent of the patients can actually get this. Yes, drug and it's not this, is, this is true for pancreatic cancer, and unfortunately, so far, the clinical trial didn't say that much. So we have time for one more question. So if you inhibit the, um, um, the inhibitor of the immune system, um, what you describe as, yeah. the, as the signal, um, don't T cells not just attack random cells in your body? This is a very really great question. So the point is what cancer does in order to escape this immune checkup, they overexpress or they produce these stopping signals in high abundance. So when you get the drug, it can't because you have so much of these signals, so the drug selectively can't go to that area. And this is like you have to do so much with those adjustments so that it doesn't harm the normal cells. Okay, thanks. So, essentially, this, is, this problem is solved. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you.